right. What I wanted to talk about this morning is I wanted to talk about telephone prospecting and, and how to get the most out of your telephone prospecting when you're focused in on it and you're in, intense with it. But before I start there, I wanted to ask you a, a, a question. When you're practicing, when you're role playing, and you practice at a a really high level, because that's what we teach you, right? Say yes. yes. You know, you have high energy, you're enthusiastic, you're really focused on trying to get the appointment and role play with the scripts and dialogues with your role play partner. And you accomplish it. Is there ever a time when you're done prospecting and then you stop that, you go to the telephones and you start calling and your practice was at this level, but your calling is down a few notches. Does that ever happen? Yes. Yes. Happens all the time, right? Do you ever wonder why? You're tired from the practice. From the practice. <laughs> we have a whole nother thing we need to talk about on that. No, I don't think you're tired from the practice. I think, write this down, right? down the show-off factor. Write down the show-off factor. Very scientific, okay? When we're practicing, we're either on the phone or across from a person, and we're trying to do the best that we possibly can in that moment of time, and our ego always wants us to be looking good in front of other people, right? Say yes. yes. I mean, that's a fact, an absolute fact that we have to live with. So then what happens is, here we were, and, let me back up, we always want to look good in front of people who know us, maybe people that we want to look good in front of. So then, therefore, we're working at a much higher level. So when we go to the phones, we don't necessarily know the people on the phone, and our energy level drops, our script capabilities and experience drop, and we are getting a different result. Does this make any sense? So what we need to do is we need to structure it where we put the show-off factor into our daily prospecting. So one of the things that I want you to do, so let me ask you this question. If you recorded your prospecting, no, let's not even say you recorded it. Let's just assume that you were prospecting and I sat down next to you. Would your prospecting go up or would it drop down? Would you try to do better, or equal to, or worse? Better, better right? If, if Mike Ferry were to sit down next to you, you'd probably want to do better, right? Say yes. yes. If your wife, or husband, or significant other, or somebody in the company that you wanted to look good in front of were to sit down next to you, you'd want to look good in front of them, right? The issue is that we can't have that all the time. You're not going to get Mike Ferry to come in here and sit next to you for three hours. You're not going to get me to come in here and sit next to you for three hours five days a week. It's just not going to happen. It does, cannot physically happen. So here's a suggestion. Here's what you need to be doing. You need to record your prospecting need to record your prospecting and think as though that Mike or Neil or Bill or Frank or somebody else that you really respect is going to be listening to this call. That you are, when you are done with prospecting, you are going to then mail the tape or the CD or email it to that person. They're going to then listen to it. Does this make sense? One of the reasons I first started 
recording these presentations was to send every one of them to Mike Ferry. And I do. Every week, I send one to Mike. I don't know which one he listens to or which one he doesn't listen to, but occasionally I'll get a phone call from him and says, hey, remember when you did X, Y, and Z? Yeah. Hey, you looked at it? Yeah. Boy, boy, do we need the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm presenting, I know to that camera, to that tape, to that audio, that Mike's going to get this CD or this DVD and he's going to listen to it at some point, and he's going to critique me on it. Now, I work at a higher level and try to work at a higher level all the time because of that. So my point to you is, what if you worked with the same idea in mind where you recorded your presentation with the idea that you're going to send it to your coach, to your mentor, to somebody you appreciate, to say, look, Hey, do me a favor. Listen to this for me at your convenience and give me a call and let me know what you think about it. So two things happen. A, um, as long as you're not burying somebody, they'll probably do that for you. And then B, if you know that Neil or Mike or Bill or Frank or Al are going to listen to it, would you might do a little bit better job? Does this make sense? Yeah. I'm not getting a lot of buy-in yeah. here. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> so that's point number one. Point number two is how to get the most out of the telephone during your prospecting hours. So write this down. First of all, you need to make sure that you're calling in the morning. You've heard this before, right? You need to make sure you call in the morning. Now, let me explain why you need to call in the morning. Number one, that's the time that you generally have the most energy and you're communicating energy at a much higher level. Number two, your clients are a little bit more receptive to talking to you in the morning than they are at five or six o'clock in the afternoon. I know you might talk to more people in the afternoon. You might think that. But the truth is, you're going to be talking to more people that don't want to listen to your story. So you might as well talk to people in the morning who are more open to your story and more interested in what you're going to say. And the third reason, which is the most important reason, write this down, circle it, number three, when you don't get the prospecting done in the morning, the odds are you will not accomplish it in the afternoon. Something always gets what? In the way. Always gets in the way. So if you decide, if you're going to prospect, prospect in the morning, because that's when you're going to get these three things. One, you're going to have the most energy. Two, most of the people you're talking to are going to be the most interested. And the most important one is that you will usually do it. All right? So I wrote that down as the second thought. Now, third thought. Prospecting on the phone is based on a 50-minute hour. Write that down. A 50-minute prospecting hour. You got 50 minutes of prospecting, intense focused prospecting, and then 10 minutes of a break. 10 minutes where you're not prospecting. Now, during the break, write this down. This, these are the do nots. Here's what most people tend to do. They prospect for 50 minutes, and then they check messages, and then they check emails, and then they follow up with an escrow, and of course there's some kind of a problem takes them south, and they don't finish their prospecting time, right? Say yes. yes. OK. A 50-minute hour and a 10-minute break, 10 minute means go get some water, go have a snack, build your energy back up. If there was a script or something you're a little concerned with, you didn't get right, work on that a little bit. Take a walk around the building. Clear your mind and then get back on the phones right when you're supposed to. 
right when you're supposed to. Ten minutes. That's it. That is not time to check emails. It is not time to check voicemails. It is not time to call escrow. It is not time to call your spouse or significant other to decide what's for dinner. It's not time to check on whether or not your flight's going to be on time to go to Vegas. It's for nothing but relaxation, rest, recharging your battery so you can get on the phones 10 minutes later. All right? I wrote down here the next point. The, the morning starts the night before. Write down the morning starts the night before. The morning starts the night before. But what I'm referring to mostly here is who you're going to call or what doors you're going to go out on and what you're going to do. Unfortunately, what some agents do is they come in, they want to start prospecting. I saw this this morning again. You want to start prospecting at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm here at 8 o'clock. Agents are on the computers pulling files, pulling leads, pulling phone numbers. They get their phone numbers and they don't start calling till 8.15, 8.20, 8.30, quarter to 9. You don't get it done. Something happens, the computer doesn't work, you, the, it's out of paper, the printer, whatever the situation. You're, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Do this stuff the night before. If you can't do it the night before, get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, have it set up at the house, print it, get it done, put it in your pocket, get to the office if that's where you're going to start prospecting, and do it that way. So plan on who you're going to call the night before. Don't take your valuable time to put together your phone numbers and who you're going to call the next day. Now, there's an issue of calling. So some people will call for three hours, and they'll continue to do the same thing that they're doing with the same energy, the same results. Well, here's what happens. The first hour, your energy's here, even if you're doing recording. The second hour, sometimes your energy drops a little bit. And the third hour, sometimes your energy drops a little bit more, or you're missing something. So what I want you to do is I want you to take out your, your daily grading report that I gave you. Okay, Take out this daily grading report. You want to move to the next level in prospecting. You need to focus on what you're doing every single hour that you're doing it. So we have three, let's say in this particular case, we have three hours of prospecting. Maybe it's more, maybe it's a little less, but we broke this into three segments. So each one of these is one hour of prospecting on the grading report. And what you're going to do is you're going to grade yourself in these six categories at the end of your prospecting on a scale from 1 to 10, 1 being pathetic, 10 being awesome. Then what happens is at the end of that grading, you can decide, wow, i got to crank it up here, or this is working there. And you don't lose three hours, ladies and gentlemen. You potentially could lose one hour, but you're not going to lose the three. Does this make sense? So let's walk through how I would grade this. The first thing on it is minutes prospected without interruption. 50 minute hour, zero interruptions. Zero interruptions. Friends, up calls, cell phones, emails, all of that is an interruption to the focus that you have, what's going on in your mind. Sometimes you get interrupted, two things will happen. A, you can't get back into the groove quite fast enough, or B, you're interrupted and the client said something or maybe had a little bit of a hesitation that could be the, the, um, the opening for you that you might look at it and say, wow, that's, that's a possible lead there. Let me follow down that track. But because you weren't paying attention, something interrupted you. So on a scale from 1 to 10, how would you grade yourself that last hour in your prospecting? The second category, who'd you call in what order? All right. This is, I think, a 10 order of calling. So you can write this down. First of all, it's you want to call two or three past clients first. 
Just write this, this order down. Two or three past clients first. Why past clients and sphere of influence first? Because those people like you and you like them, it's an easy starting phone call. If you start with a start with calling expires and for sale by owners and you start this first thing in the morning, you know, you don't get the adrenaline going, you don't get the mouth going. Talk to somebody who likes you and you like also past client. So two or three past client or sphere. The second one is um, past client sphere of influence. Right. Now the second one is going to be um, expired and for sale by owners. So then you're going to call two or three expireds, and if you're working for sale by owners, they get called at the same time. So two or three expireds and for sale by owners. Then you're going to call two or three old expireds or old for sale by owners. Then you're going to call three to five just listeds or just solds. Three to five just listeds or just solds. And then at the end of that, you're going to call one or two follow-up calls. One or two hot follow-up calls. So in an hour, in a 50-minute hour, you still made anywhere from 7 to 12 contacts, which is what you're trying to do. But it's through the gamut, and you're not getting beat up in any one area. Does this make sense? Say yes. yes. So to me, that's perfect. That's what you need to be doing for yourselves. The next thing that we're going to grade on is attitude, approach, and expectation. What's your attitude on the phone? What's your approach? What do you expect to accomplish during that hour? At the end of the hour, how was your grading on that? Were you, did you have high expectations? Did you have a really good attitude on it? Or was it lower? Was it a 1, 3, or 5? Or was it a 10? And if, it's not, if your attitude, approach, and expectation is low, and it's in the 5 or 6, you need to move it up into the 8 or 9. Now, now listen to what I'm going to say. If you're calling, and all of these are in the 5s and 6s, and you move them to the 7s or 8s, it's a dramatic difference in the next hour in the results that you're going to get. Dramatic difference. Just, you don't have to go from a 5 to a 10. If you just went from a 5 to a 7, you're going to get a dramatic result. The next category is, um, are you using the right scripts and dialogues? Or are you just winging it? Are you using the right scripts and dialogues? If you're working on expireds, are you working on the expired scripts? Do you know the objections? If you don't know the objections, make a note of it so that not during prospecting time, but after prospecting time, you can work through this and get better at your scripts and dialogues. Then I wrote down here energy and intensity. Energy and intensity. The difference between you and your competition is your energy and your intensity. That's the difference. If you're Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Jones. I noticed your home came up as an expired listing, you know, and I was curious, when do you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home? You think you're going to get some results with that? Or should it sound more like, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, Neil Schwartz, Century 21 Masters, noticed your home came up as an expired listing, and I was really curious, when do you folks plan on interviewing the right agent for the job of selling your home? Which one is probably going to elicit more positive comments, the first one or the second one? Second one. Have some energy in this. And if you find that you've been prospecting for the last hour with low energy, be honest with yourself. Crank it up a couple of points. The next one here is never take no for an answer with a qualified client when yes is still possible. Ladies and gentlemen, that line itself will make you money. We give up too early. We give up way too early with our clients. We give up way too early. Never take no for an answer with a qualified client when yes is still possible. You know what I'm talking about. Client says, yeah, we decided not to sell. OK, thank you, bye. Well, laugh, OK? I'll bet you last week that happened 100 times in this group. And you guys are good. Because you just gave in. You just didn't want to do it. 
You just didn't want to go a little extra further. You've got to ask the next question and the next question and the next question. Do you guys get this? Is this making sense? Can this help you? Now, come on. Can this help you? Yeah. Jeez. I wrote down here, it's possible, even probable, that we're going to be off during our prospecting time. It's possible and probable that we're going to be off. But if you use this daily grading sheet or something like it on a very regular basis, you're going to only be off for an hour at a time. And you're going to be able to bring it back and be able to focus on what needs to be done on a daily, weekly basis. I wrote down here, today matters. Success is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. Success is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. The Miami Heat did not choose to do the job that needed to be done last night. The Denver Mavericks did. They chose Dallas, excuse me. Dallas Mavericks did. Success is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. You choose. You choose to do this. You choose not to do this. You choose to prospect. You choose not to prospect. You choose to role play and practice, or you choose not to. You choose to get up on time, or you choose not to. You choose to return phone calls on a proper uh, when, when they're supposed to be done, or you choose not to. They're your choices. They are the difference between success and failure. Now let's go out and make this the best week we've ever had. Thank you.